The operational cost of the LMS-901 Baikal aircraft, specifically its cost per flight hour, is expected to be approximately 150,000 rubles. This information was disclosed by Maxim Karin, commercial director of the Ural Civil Aviation Plant, during a presentation at the Federation Council of the Russian Federation. According to Karin, this estimate applies to the initial period of operational deployment and places the Baikal's operating expenses on a level comparable to those of aircraft, such as the well-known AN-2 and similar foreign light utility aircraft. The announcement also clarified that the program is steadily advancing towards certification milestones. Approval for the inaugural flight is expected in the near future, while the issuance of a type certificate is planned by the end of the year, 2026. This schedule is critical for subsequent production phases and for the commercial introduction of the aircraft. The Baikal's operating cost per flight hour estimated in the range of roughly 140,000 to 150,000 rubles, includes expenses such as aviation fuel, routine maintenance, crew salaries, and standard operational overhead. It does not include the acquisition price of the aircraft itself. As emphasized by Karen, this cost level aligns the Baikal closely with the legacy AN-2 and comparable international aircraft, improving its appeal to regional airlines and aviation service operators. This pricing approach serves several strategic objectives. It supports the economic viability of low-margin domestic routes, particularly in remote regions such as Siberia and the Russian Far East. By matching the operating costs of older aircraft, the Baikal is positioned as a modern yet affordable replacement for aging fleets. These manageable operating expenses may attract not only state operators, but also private carriers and public services, including emergency medical aviation and forest monitoring missions. Karen also indicated that authorization for the aircraft's first flight is expected in the immediate future. Although the program has encountered technical and production challenges, the first flight will represent a major step in validating the aircraft's design and safety characteristics. Following this milestone, the aircraft is expected to receive its type certificate, the formal regulatory approval required for commercial service, by the end of 2026. This timeline corresponds with earlier reports stating that certification activities are progressing according to plan. The process is supported by the integration of a new domestically produced turboprop engine designated VK800, along with a Russian-made propeller system. Aircraft certification is a complex, multi-year process involving extensive ground tests, flight trials, comprehensive documentation, and strict compliance with aviation safety regulations. Meeting the 2026 target is essential for the manufacturer to begin deliveries and finalize operational contracts. The LMS-901 Baikal has been designed as a lightweight multi-role aircraft with a nine-seat cabin. Its primary purpose is to replace the aging and two aircraft across a wide range of regional airline and utility operations in Russia. The aircraft is designed to cruise at speeds of up to 300 km per hour and has a maximum range of approximately 3,000 km. When carrying a full payload of around 2 metric tons, its effective range is about 1,500 km. These characteristics make the aircraft suitable for passenger transport, cargo delivery, medical evacuation missions, and aerial surveillance tasks. Beyond transportation, the Baikal is also promoted as a tool for strengthening regional connectivity by linking remote settlements with major transport hubs. While the operating cost per flight hour reflects day-to-day -day expenses, the purchase price of the Baikal has been the subject of considerable discussion. Early estimates place the aircraft's price between approximately 220 million and 340 million rubles, equivalent to roughly 2,800,000 to 4,300,000 United States dollars, at exchange rates prevailing at the time. This positioned the aircraft to compete with foreign models such as the Cessna Grand Caravan.
Later reports suggested that the price could rise to around 320 million rubles, or approximately 4 million United States dollars, depending on configuration options and production volume. Some industry observers have cautioned that effective costs could increase further if fixed expenses are spread across limited production runs. These price adjustments reflect broader challenges facing Russian aircraft manufacturing. Inflation, supply chain disruptions, import substitution efforts, and the growing share of domestically produced components have all contributed to higher unit costs and longer production timelines. Despite these factors, the Baikal is still presented as a competitively priced and adaptable solution within a demanding market environment. To support the launch of serial production, Russian authorities and the manufacturer are seeking rapid approval of the project's investment passport, a key administrative step in state funding and planning. This approval would enable support mechanisms, such as preferential leasing programs, typically backed by government institutions, making aircraft acquisition easier for operators. Preferential leasing plays a crucial role in lowering initial financial barriers for airlines, particularly smaller regional operators with limited financial reserves. It also helps ensure stable demand for the manufacturer and continuity in production. Without such financial instruments, higher financing costs could reduce orders and disrupt the production pipeline. In addition to leasing support, state organizations such as the State Transport Leasing Company are planning to finance substantial Baikal fleets. These plans include long-term leasing arrangements for dozens of aircraft, for example on the order of 50 units, which would further stabilize demand and accelerate deployment. Despite optimistic projections regarding operating costs and certification timelines, the Baikal program faces several challenges. Some analysts within the Russian aviation sector question whether the aircraft will achieve broad market adoption. Concerns include potentially high acquisition costs relative to airline budgets, limited production capacity, and competition from helicopters that offer greater flexibility in remote regions. Even with favorable operating costs, the total cost of ownership, including purchase price and long-term maintenance, remains a decisive factor for operators. Without strong state support and accessible financing tools, market uptake could fall below expectations. The program has also experienced delays and technical revisions, particularly related to the integration of the domestic engine and propulsion system. Such changes can affect certification schedules and early operational deployment. More broadly, the Russian light aircraft sector has faced difficulties in other projects, highlighting the complexity of sustaining such programs under challenging economic conditions. The announcement of an operating cost of approximately 150,000 rubles per flight hour sends a clear strategic signal. The manufacturer and aviation authorities aim to position the Baikal as an economically viable and regionally appropriate aircraft for the domestic market. By aligning operating costs with historical benchmarks such as the AN2 and maintaining competitive expenses, they seek to stimulate demand among regional airlines, government agencies, and public sector operators. Ultimately, the success of these plans will depend on meeting certification targets, controlling production costs, ensuring effective financing solutions, and achieving market acceptance. The planned type certification by the end of 2026, combined with state-supported leasing mechanisms, will be critical in transitioning the Baikal from a prototype into widespread operational service. As developments continue, the Baikal program remains one of the most closely watched segments of Russia's civilian aircraft industry. It reflects both the opportunities and the challenges involved in revitalizing domestic aerospace manufacturing and sustaining regional aviation across the country. If you like the video, please subscribe, share, and like. Also, please take the memberships to encourage us.